All right, so good afternoon. We're here today with Peter Voser, the CEO of Royal Dutch Shell, and we at CSIS are hosting Shell's rollout of their scenarios outlook. Um, so Peter, welcome, first of all. We're Thank glad you. that you can do this with us today. And a um, couple of questions. You've been doing scenarios now for 40 years, and I was struck by the notion that in Washington, especially now, we're talking about having things done in a crisis period, not looking mm. uh, out into the future and figuring out the fact that you've been doing scenarios for so long, how does it add to the practicality of how your strategy is developed within Shell? Mm. No, thanks for having us to, uh, today. Our pleasure. It's great to be here. Scenarios, yes, indeed, 40 years. And it's really an element which we use to challenge the executives and the board thinking um, about the next few decades. So where are the, the issues? which may not mean business as usual, right. where our long-term plans which we have will be challenged or our business models will be challenged. And uh, that's the way we are using them. So it's not short-term planning, it is really uh, long-term planning with different scenarios. We don't normally say the one or the other we prefer, it is we are looking where the various business models will go. If I go back a few years, uh, back in 05 with those scenarios, we, we clearly uh, they were they highlighted that we will actually see a very fast growing demand side mm -hmm. and the supply side will struggle so that's where we started to push gas much more uh, in order to actually um, be ready when the demand is coming so um, I could go further um, into the next uh, scenarios where they talked about a lot of energy prices and new government regulations on, on transport fuels, biofuels. That's where we then start to focus more on sustainable biofuels. Right. So we then built that into our long-term plans and that's okay. the way we challenge ourselves. So reconciling, uh, for us, the reconciling of the climate agenda with this new fond fossil fuel wealth, both oil and gas, and it's a dilemma because it's not sure, I'm not sure the administration knows how to handle it because we have jobs and fiscal constraints, but we also have the, the climate imperative bearing mm. down. In Europe, it's a slightly different story. You certainly have a different take. How does Shell view this? I think you, it's not an or question, this is an and question. Yes. We need a, a sustainable energy system which has a lower carbon footprint, and that will have fossil fuels and it, uh, uh, it will have renewables. And depending on which scenario you are in, it will be more of this or more of the others. It depends on the political circumstances, the economic circumstances. But clearly the climate change will drive over time um, the selection of, um, of the, the energy components. And in, our, uh, in one of our um, scenarios, we call it mountains, that's where gas, for example, right. will, achieve mo uh, uh, will achieve a lower CO2 balance in a much faster way because it will start to replace coal for um, electricity generation. On the other one, which we call ocean, for example, solar by 2060 will be the biggest energy component uh, which we have in, in the energy mix with gas playing a role, but a smaller role. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where we are trying to, to really see how we can achieve the climate outcome we want to achieve uh, in the different scenarios. I'm always struck too by the fact that in the scenarios that, you know, the milepost guidelines, so you kind of know what, <laughs> what system you're operating in, it's always good to know where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, we, we don't get it always right, right. but we try, so right. that's right. Well, okay, so final question. In fact, in the United States here that the landscape has changed so dramatically in the last five years, and we didn't start stumbling onto the shale gas mm. phenomenon until 2006, right? Yeah. So it's five or six years. Um, light oil came even later than that, so it's less than five. But the incremental production has been huge, which then requires an infrastructure build out. Yeah. And we're finding that the midstream takes longer than the upstream and the downstream takes longer than the midstream. Yeah. So sequencing is important. I was reading, you had, you had made comments about how we need um, better clarity in, in both policy and regulation or just policy articulation from the government. Can you elaborate on that? Mm. Yes, indeed. Th this came very fast. Yes. And therefore, the industry, like also society and government, the administration, the regulators, we were all somewhat surprised. surprised. And therefore, I think when we now start to, to build up um, the investment profile of either light oil or, or the gas side, what we really need is clear regulations 
which actually set uh, the frameworks on okay. within which we can develop that. Now, governments do have a tendency not to set the frameworks. They kind of try to to point to the losers and the winners. And that's not how we should do this, because we need long-term certainty that within the framework we can develop and then keep the standards high. And we are happy to be monit monitored ag against that, mm -hmm. let's say, um, uh, water usage, let's yeah. say the fracking technologies which we use, etc., etc., the footprint which we need for, for the rigs, etc. But let us also uh, develop the technology and, and the innovation for that so that we can actually then comply with the framework. When we move too fast into, um, in, into a regulation, where we can't actually comply, that will actually slow down slow the development. Down, yes. We need to do both at the same time. So we need regulations for the long term, should be a framework, and it should stay the same for a long time. Because that's how we actually will free up the funds to make these huge investments. And is it your sense there's a lot of investment sitting on the sideline just waiting for signals? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, you see this, uh, uh, certainly in the US, um, we need these signals so uh, that we can, as you s also said, we need the infrastructure, we may need rail systems, okay. we need to invest in refineries, we want to invest in gas to chemical plants, gas to liquids plants, we want to know how the export of LNG is going to be done so that we can actually start to plan on what we do with the molecules on the upstream right. and how we drive them into the midstream and the downstream. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a, a full set set of, uh, of regulations, um, market um, factors which we need to take into account and have some certainty around that. We can deal with the pricing volatility because we are used to that, mm -hmm. but we need uh, the, the legal and the commercial frameworks to be clear. So the landscape is changing, but it's got to be an exciting time in the en energy industry. I, I have I'm quite a long time in this business, 30 years now, but uh, the pace which we have seen over the last few years, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal and it's, a, it's an enormous challenge for us, but that's the fun, uh, in the fun in the game at the end. So uh, we can use technology, innovation, we can move fast, we can secure supply for, mm -hmm. for the biggest uh, consumer markets in the world and um, uh, energy independence is in the cards. Now we need all the regulations. We still need the pipelines. Right. <laughs> Some of them are hotly <laughs> debated <laughs> and we need to move forward on that. But that's an exciting time. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, welcome to the United States and welcome to CSIS. And we look forward to the presentation. Thank, Thank you, you so very Good much. Good to be here. Thank Great. you. Thank Good. you.